being seven o'clock, we'll call a meeting to order. Uh, roll call, please. Mayor Bosmus. Here. Commissioner Bauer. Here. Commissioner Gage. Here. Commissioner Gary. Here. Commissioner Lynn. Here. Commissioner Shimmons. Here. Commissioner Torty. Uh, Commissioner Lynn. Move to excuse Commissioner Torty. Support. Then move support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Same. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, item number one, uh, presentation of the uh, 2015 Garden of the Year Awards. And to help us with that, we have uh, Becky Botro. We call her the uh, Beautification Princess. <laughs> and first Vice President of the Keep Michigan Beautiful uh, people. So I want to help you. Yes, please come help me pass this up. Um, each year, the city accepts nominations for the Garden of the Year, and so the community has a chance to vote for their favorite property. And it's always interesting because you'd be surprised at how many, um, they don't get the exact address. I get the house on the corner next to, <laughs> so it's always fun to go out and, and see them. Um, as I call your name, you can come up and accept your award and your certificate. And each year, um, once an award is given, uh, the property is not eligible to be given in t for three years. And of course, the properties have to be within the city limits. So. Um, the first one we have is Jason McLeod at 937 Brown Street, and he's done great in the whole neighborhood, fixing up all the, all the houses. The next one we have is for Lake Superior State University, and it's the campus grounds, of course, 650 West Easter Day Avenue. And Steve Gregory's here, who's in charge of the campus and the grounds and making sure they all look beautiful. We actually, we had our Keep Michigan Beautiful board meeting, the summer meeting was held here in July, and we had quite a few comments from all the board members saying how great and proud they were of the campus, so it's getting acknowledged elsewhere too. Um, the next one we have is Clayton and Gail Schunk at 2170 West 14th Street. And I got nominations for both of them, and I, I told Gail does most of the work. <laughs> Next, one, it, next one's for Donald and Carol Earl at 2151 Davitt Street. I don't know if they were able to come. <laughs> and then I don't see. The next one was St. Mary's Church at 320 East Portage Avenue. Oh, great. Yeah, I kind of found my way here. One. This is my bad response to all those. Well, Lilies. Yeah, well, the Lilies, North. We're probably yeah. thank, thank you. you. I just, I just wanted to point out that the logo on the plaques that were given tonight, they were um, done by Cheryl Stevens, and they say the beauty of the Sioux depends on you. So on behalf of the city, I do want to thank you all for taking the time to show up tonight to be recognized and for the time and dedication that you've shown to improve and enhance that your property, which does make a difference in our city, and it encourages others to take pride in their own property. And remember, the beauty of the Sioux does depend on you. So thank you very much. And uh, I'd certainly like to thank Becky uh, for all that she does for the beautification of the city and, uh, again, the, uh, the residents that continue to make uh, the Sioux what it is and continue to do the beautification events and activities. We certainly appreciate that. So thanks. It's your 20th year? I've been with the city for 24, almost 25, but, yeah, it's over 20. Over 20. 20 it was 94 I took over. 94. Great. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> You, you sure you can, uh, if you'd like to depart, uh, certainly. Mike. <laughs> Specific shout out. Yeah. Um, item number two uh, public comment on scheduled agenda items. 
Any person may reserve time to speak on an agenda item not to exceed uh, three minutes per person. Is there anyone in the audience like to speak on an agenda item? Okay, hearing none, we'll go on to item number three, the consent agenda. City Clerk, please. Under the consent agenda, a minute approval. One, approval of the minutes of the regular city commission meeting of July 20th. Recommended action, approve the minutes of the regular city commission meeting of July 20th, 2015. Item two, acceptance of the minutes of the following boards and commissions. A, City Tree Commission of July 21st. B, Downtown Development Authority of August or April 8th, April 30th, and June 10th. C, Planning Commission of July 23rd. D, Police Fire Pension Board of June 24th. E, Sault Ste. Marie Housing Commission of June 18th. F, Tax Board of Review, July 21st. And G, Zoning Board of Appeals from July 16th. Recommended action, accept the minutes of the various boards and commissions. Item B, appointments and resignations. One, appointment to the Community Services Board. Recommended action, appoint Cara DiNuccio to the Community Services Board for a term to expire on July 1, 2018, and have the clerk send a letter of thanks to Robert Landis for his years of service to this board. Item C, communications. One, from the Michigan Municipal League. Designation of delegates for the annual business meeting. Recommended action, appoint Mayor Tony Bospis as delegate and Mayor Pro Tem William Lynn as alternate delegate to the annual MML convention. Uh, would, a, would a commissioner like something further explained or uh, taking on, taken off as to be further explained or if not, uh, Commissioner Gage? I saw move approval of the consent agenda. Support. It's been moved and supported. Are there any questions? Uh, roll call, please. Mayor Bospis? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Shimmons? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Item 4, Special Orders of Business. A is public hearing on confirmation of special assessment role for culvert replacements on Seymour Street. A is public comment, and B is action on the confirmation of special assessment. Okay, thank you. Uh, City Manager Oliver Turner. Thank you, Mayor. As commissioners are aware, at the July 20th, 2015 City Commission meeting, the Commission set the time and date for a public hearing regarding the single lot special assessment for the driveway culvert replacements that are a component of the Seymour Street resurfacing project between Three Mile Road and Marquette Avenue. A notice of the public hearing was published in the Sioux Evening News and individual notices were mailed to all 13 affected property owners. All the property owners having culverts and or culvert end sections replaced were in agreement with the replacement. Accordingly, it's my recommendation first that the mayor conduct a public hearing on the single lot special assessment for driveway culvert replacements on Seymour Street between Three Mile Road and Marquette Avenue, and thereafter, after the public hearing, uh, that the City Commission confirm the special assessment role for culvert replacements on Seymour Street. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. And at this time, we'll hold a public hearing on the single lot special assessment for the driveway culvert replacements on uh, Seymour Street between Three Mile Road and Marquette Avenue. Is there anyone in the audience like to make a comment at this time? Okay, hearing none, we'll close the public hearing. Uh, Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Bauer. So move that um, the City Commission confirm the special assessment role for culvert replacements on Seymour Street, C-02-15. Support. Support. It's been moved and supported. Are there any questions? Just a comment, I do believe the payback is over a seven-year period. They can certainly pay it all at once, or you can pay it in different increments up in two, three, uh, seven years, right? That's correct, Mayor. Okay. Anyone else? We have a motion in support. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Shimmons? Yes. Mayor Bospis? Yes. <coughs> motion carried. Thank you. The next item under special orders of business, item B, second reading of an ordinance creating the Marine Service Zoning District. A is public comments and B is action on the ordinance. Okay, thank you. Uh, City Manager Turner. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Planning and Zoning Administrator Freeman has prepared a PowerPoint presentation regarding this subject matter. Okay. Good evening, Mayor Commissioners. Kelly, evening.
Uh, so what I'd like to do is just uh, briefly walk through what would and would not necessarily be allowed uh, in this uh, new zoning district. And then I'll take any questions and turn it over to uh, Mr. Turner. So uh, we'll start with the principal permitted uses, which are uses that can take place by right and that you don't need any special permission in order to conduct them uh, within the district. Uh, so I'll just kind of run through everything. If there's any questions, stop me. Uh, public and private marinas, uh, recreational watercraft sales, things like boats, canoes, that kind of thing, as well as rental and service and seasonal storage of those items. Uh, retail businesses, so fishing equipment, bait, boating supplies, uh, whatnot. Uh, Water-based uh, tour facilities, uh, that's kind of like the, the Sioux Locks boat tours uh, type of operation. Uh, public and private recreation areas, uh, marines provisioning and resupply services, that's like the uh, service that uh, MCM does where they run boats up and down the river. Uh, marine fuel sales, uh, non-recreational watercraft repair, uh, restaurants, taverns, and bars, private clubs and lodges, uh, campgrounds, uh, underwater log recovery and drying, but you can tell where that came mm -hmm. from, uh, as well as uh, accessory buildings and uses that are customary and incident, you know, sheds, things and whatnot. Uh, so this next group of uses are uses that are allowed but are subject to special conditions, which is to say there are some specific restrictions that we place upon how those uses operate. Uh, first one is seasonal non-recreational watercraft storage. Um, in that circumstance, they need to be screened when closer than 100 feet to uh, non-waterfront property line. It should be either a side property line or a street property line. Uh, Long-term non-recreational watercraft storage needs to be uh, screened entirely or uh, stored inside. Uh, dismantling for salvage uh, spares or recycling of uh, watercraft. Uh, first off, anything removed uh, needs to be placed inside of a building or taken from the property uh, within a week of being removed. Uh, during that period of time, things may be stored outside, but they have to be screened entirely from adjacent properties. So you can't have piles of stuff flying out there that you can see from the street or an adjacent property. Additionally, any kind of work like this has to comply with all the applicable state and federal regulations. So DEQ, EPA, OSHA, all those, all those things that apply. Um, dredging, there's kind of two different flavors of this. If you've got uncontaminated spoils, you can place them on the site. And once they're uh, dewatered, you can grade them into the site and stabilize them with uh, grass or some other natural cover that should keep the dust down. And uh, for contaminated spoils, uh, this is one of the things that was prohibited in the first version of the ordinance that you saw back on July 20th. Uh, since that time, I've checked with the Planning Commission and they universally support um, the requested change from Joe McCoy to allow contaminated spoils to be watered there, or dewatered um, on MCM site. Um, so what I've uh, changed in here is that they, it is allowed provided that the uh, dewatering is done in compliance with all the applicable regulations and everything uh, once it's dewatered is removed from the site within 30 days. Uh, with respect to uh, building heights and setbacks, uh, it's either three stories or 40 feet. And setbacks would be 20 feet from the front, five from the sides, and then 10 from the rear. And if there's any questions on the specifics, uh, I'd be happy Anyone to. Anyone have any questions? Do you have a question? City Attorney. Could you repeat your comments on contaminated soil dewatering? Certainly. Uh, so uh, the process of dewatering itself, or just that they can de or they can dewater contaminated spoils on the site. However, they need to be removed within 30 days after the dewatering is completed. In, in looking at the draft ordinance, 15A01, use is subject to special conditions mm -hmm. under item four dredging. It says spoils which are for found to contain contaminants requiring special handling may not be dewatered, stored, or retained. There are two site. versions of the ordinance which are, were attached to the item. The first one was what they saw at first reading, and the second one is incorporating oh, okay. the, the comments and the request that was received from Mr. McCoy. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Commissioner Shimmons? Um, I'm wondering if we are adequately staffed to actually keep track of this. City Manager? Um, Commissioner Shimmons, pertaining to uh, the need for the any business that would be under the zoning district to comply with the environmental regulations, I believe that would fall to uh, MDQ or EPA. Now, as far as the staffing, it would be uh, labor intensive uh, beyond the current scope of what we do. However, I do believe that could fit within the uh, administrative capacity of the department, the enforcement department. It would take some follow up, though, um, especially to determine if something is sitting outside for a period of one week. I'm just concerned that um, in the case of MCM that they're not going to comply. They have a long history of non-compliance and not meeting dates for compliance, even, even self-imposed dates. Are, I mean, are we, are we going to be able to deal with that? Right. I do think that over the past six months, as the Commission is aware, um, this entire process of creating a Marine Services Zoning District was tied to blight enforcement. And we've been able to establish a decent working relationship with MCM Marine um, from the initial inspection that was performed by Ordinance Enforcement Officer Brown. They've completed a cleanup of approximately 90% of the property. And upon a visit to be informed that they were to clean up target blight structures, um, they cleaned up their structures and buildings to a sufficient point before even see, receiving the notice. So we do feel like there's going to be a reinspection this week to go over the final points that would need to be completed by MCM to bring them into compliance. But at this point, they've substantially complied, um, even though it's not complete, as you very well point out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Any other questions? Uh, Commissioner Gary? Uh, just as a reminder, we're looking at adopting a version of an ordinance, and we're not looking at the specific request from any exactly. particular property owner tonight. Mm -hmm. So this correct. is the creation of an ordinance. And before we were to make any action on the other, we'd have uh, public uh, input, certainly at, yes, at both levels, the uh, Planning Commission and this level. Yes. Commissioner Shimmons. Yes, we are looking at an ordinance that's across the board and not specific to MCM, but there is a component of it that is specific to MCM, and that's why I was asking. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? I just just a comment on the um, do we have a manpower type of thing, and in, in the uh, city attorney has mentioned the fact to me that the in many zoning sections that we have, um, we have um, many of the same kind of requirements so that we, he's also under the understanding that the, we'd have enough staff to follow up uh, if need be type of thing. Um, and again, it's a, it's, a, it's a working document and it's a way to um, have the existence of a, a marine type of an activity in an area that may be a quasi is also resident, not even quasi, just is residential, so that these two can coexist and it's going to take, you know, communication and working together um, by all those entities. And I think um, MCM Marine has, in fact, um, paid attention to cleaning up their site. I mean, it's, it's uh, nowhere uh, what it was like uh, a year and a half ago. And I, I and I, I don't care for the screening at this point in the in the front, the dark the dark screening. But at the same time, um, the cedar trees are, are excellent. If they can continue that, that would be a nice uh, uh, view. But ultimately, um, they they create a function that that is necessary that they feel in the community, and they certainly employ people in the community. And I think if they can coexist with the citizens across the street, and 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 I live, don't live that far from. Uh, MCA Marine on the east side of town, so um, we certainly think that this is a, a workable situation. Commissioner Gage. Uh, Mike, I have a question kind of for Kelly. Um, how, how will the other businesses that would be affected or could possibly be zoned this way, have they reacted to the proposed ordinance? Um, I haven't heard from anybody um, in terms of other businesses in the community who would be interested in rezoning to this particular uh, designation. 
Any other questions? Do we have a motion in support? Or Commissioner Lynn? Or we're, oh, we're still in the public, uh, yeah. we're in public comment type thing? Okay. Thank you. See you, Manager. Uh, thank you, Mr. Freeman. Just to emphasize Commissioner Geary's point, um, the specific action right now would create the zoning district, and it was the administration's intent to create a zoning district that would uh, help improve the chances that items that are stored on site would be organized in a more appropriate manner. Um, Broad Vision, the uh, zoning ordinance, the Marine Services Zoning District would, um, at the same time that it recognizes the working waterfront history of the Sioux, um, it would also, if the property in question, MCMs, were to be rezoned, um, the I-2 component of that would become Marine Services and eliminate even more intensive uses from mm -hmm. possibly going onto the property in the future. Mm -hmm. That was the only other point. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Lynn. Was this a public? When you, when you could have a motion at this point, oh. right? We're not in public hearing. We don't, we don't have a public hearing going oh. on, right? Oh, okay. We've got the, it's on this public comment. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm looking at my stuff on the computer, but down here we have a public comment. Okay, at this time, if there's anyone that would like to comment on this item, we certainly would uh, ask that you do this now. And when we go to MCN, there'll be comments at that point. Mm -hmm. And there'll be uh, additional uh, public comment if MCM goes on further at this time. Okay. Okay, hearing none, we'll close the public comment. Uh, Commissioner Lynn. Your Honor, I would so move the City Commission adopt the version of the included ordinance that permits the dewatering of contaminated or dredging spoils subject to compliance with all applicable state and federal regulations. Support. <clears throat> it's been moved and supported. Any questions? Uh, Commissioner Bauer. If, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's been one instance of dewatering contaminated dredging spoils. Is that is that where to where to understand it? Just one instance to date, right? Uh, I, right. I believe it was not dewatering spoils, it was one instance of a uh, tearing apart a, a, a ship. Okay. Well I mean how often now how often do they do this? As far as the dewatering of contaminated yeah. spoils, Mr. Freeman, would you have an idea based on your conversations and on-site inspections? I can't say specifically what kind of, you know, how often that occurs, but I do know that MCM does have a specific uh, constructed area where they do the uh, dewatering of the contaminated spoils because they can collect so fairly regularly, and they've been doing this for quite a while. I know they've been doing it for quite a while, but I can't say with respect <coughs> to the regularity. But they're equipped to handle it. Oh, we have someone in the audience that maybe can answer the question. Are you, uh, could you identify yourself for the record? We appreciate it. Yes, well, Mayor, Commissioners, thank you. Uh, John Cuman with MCM Marine. Okay, John. I'm an employee of. Uh, we have done uh, contaminated sediment cleanup for Great Lakes, under the Great Lakes Initiative through the DEQ and EPA Superfund. Uh, we use the property for the Tannery Bay mm -hmm. project that we dredge there. And then two phases of the Canelton Industries, or I'm sorry, the Consumer Energies clean up right in front of our properties. Okay. From the old uh, uh, gas plant that was yeah. there. And that was coal tar. So the contaminants we're removing are not, uh, you know, it's, it's not radiation, it's not mm -hmm. methyl ethyl death. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we did help clear up those two areas of concern for the Great Lakes. And we've also done other projects on other areas of the Great Lakes. So we're very experienced in it. And uh, believe me, it's a, it's a very, very tight restriction and oversight by EPA and DEQ. So, uh, you know, they have teams that monitor us constantly. And, and uh, we're the only approved area right now that has these, the uh, infrastructure in place to, to do this process and they're very happy with their work so it's uh, I, I just wanted to ever comfort everybody and if anybody would like to see and get a little more intimate detail and, and visit it you're more than welcome I'd be happy to entertain you show you what we can do okay. thank you John mm -hmm. 
Anyone else? We have a motion in support. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Shimmons? Yes. Com Mayor Bosmus? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Item five, communications from the Community Services Board. Recommendation to allow Turner Callahan to install a little free library at Project Playground. Well, this is a great project, and uh, I'll turn it over to the city manager, but I understand uh, Turner Callahan is here with his family, and uh, if you'd like to come forward and explain the project, that would be great. Turner is a Cub Scout or Boy Scout? Boy Scout. Hi, I'm Turner Callahan. And I'm Jack Callahan. And I'm your mom, Michelle. <laughs> Jack, I was wondering if you could pass something out to you about the little library. Would that be okay? Yeah, Jack. Uh, hey, Dad. Come on up here. <laughs> they also made a poster board. I can put it up here, but they'd like to. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. They picked a video out Thank you. that they thought would kind of describe this maybe Thank you. Uh, project, and then. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks so much. Finally tonight, one guy's bright idea to start thinking inside the box, spreading his love of reading the old-fashioned way. You know, holding an actual book in your hands. As some libraries began to disappear across America, neighbors are using pop-up libraries to fill the gap. We get the story tonight from NBC's Rahana Ellis. Did you want, like, didn't you want little woman? Oh, I for the seventh grade masters of the internet age, a wooden box and what's inside can still excite. I like the feel of actually reading a book. Aha, the one I need. That's exactly what Todd Bowl hoped for when he made this to honor his mother June. A teacher with a passion for reading passed on to him. I created this little library that was a one-room schoolhouse that uh, sat on a post outside my house. And that was it. I didn't plan on making any more libraries. But as is the case in many stories, there's a twist. Last week I made my 800th sign. Rick, put your hand up there. Seeing the excitement around his library, yeah, Bowl and his friend Rick Brooks started offering support yeah, to people interested in having their own. The message, take a book, return a book. What began in Hudson, Wisconsin, now spans at least 28 states and countries around the world. Libraries have taken root at health clinics, stores, even bike paths. Here in Wisconsin, the dairy capital of America, this little free library was made using four milk crates, and the hinges came from ice boxes dating back to the 1920s. Beehives, canoes, old phone booths, all transformed into little free libraries. More than 75% of people build their own, so each is unique. But whether it's a living legacy or theme, made using store-bought or recycled material, a couple of shelves inside, the reaction speaks...
volumes. It's awesome. It's no longer just about books. The primary function of these little libraries is to bring people together, promote a sense of community, and wow, does that work. Just seeing them sparks interest. I peeked inside and thought, this is so cool. I love this. And so I brought it home to the family and said, I wonder if we could do this too. And we could and we did. It really is for anyone who walks by. It is not mine, it's all of ours. So the story of the Little Free Library continues, written by people sharing them and the books inside. Rahima Ellis, NBC News, Madison, Wisconsin. Great. I was thinking of doing it for my Eagle Scout project, making a little free library, but that's a few years off and we want to do it now because lots of people, lots of the kids who play at Project Playground don't, don't have access to the library, the public library downtown. And so Musty the odors in your home? <laughs> Eliminate them with damn. <laughs> <laughs> Things don't go right. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> because because they don't go down to the li the public library downtown. So we want to bring the library and the books inside it to them. And so we've been wanting to make a little free library for a long time. We have like about uh, maybe two hundred books saved up. And this oh, is great. The in the library and. This is Sadler from the ISD said they were going to write some grants in with their grants to kind of match up. But then, of course, the library becomes the communities because it's take a book, leave a book. So it would belong to them, but we'd like to, well, we're hoping to be the steward, at least one of the stewards of it. We've been to all of these libraries here. Did you want to? Yeah, first we saw one in Marquette. Then there, we saw one in Petoskey and Good Hearts. At Cedarville, and our friends are doing one in Houghton. And, um, we just really like to put one on the map here. Great. The, 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 little, the little free library map. Is, Tur is Turner going to build, are you going to build one of the little houses to house the, mm -hmm. to car carry the book? Okay. We'd like to. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the city, city will pay the, the fee, the $40 fee to belong. We were wondering about the um, post because we didn't, we probably wouldn't be. One that sure. We, post that, we can do the post. We'll find a way. We'll do it. So it's nice and straight. Thank you. Excellent. Sure. It's a great project. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank, thank you. Thank you, boys. There are two recommendations: the uh, to approve the free, the little free library, and also to pay the forty-dollar fee and and a, and a post to hold the uh, the uh, little house that houses the books. Uh, Commissioner Bauer, can we do this all in one? Sure. All right. So move that the commission approve the placement of the little free library for use by the public and Project Playground, and also that the commission approve the forty-dollar fee to register. Support. It's been moved, supported. All those in favor seeing that might be saying aye. 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 Oppose the same sign. Motion carried. Best wishes. Okay. Great job. We can clap for that, I think. Eh? Yeah. Okay, item number B, I think. 5B. Yep, item, on, uh, item B under communications is from the Planning Commission. Recommendation to approve an ordinance allowing uses permitted in the B3 zoning district to locate within the I1 and I2 zoning districts by right. Okay, thank you. Uh, City Manager Turner. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Freeman has returned to the podium to uh, present on this matter. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. Good evening again. Uh, one of the things that I'm constantly on the lookout for as I do my day-to-day -day duties is how well the zoning ordinance is working and if there's any changes that need to be made. And I believe I've identified one such change. Um, you can see it as soon as Bonnie, there it goes. 
Uh, this is um, the first in the list of the permitted uses in the I-1 uh, zoning district, and it states uh, that uses permitted in the B-3 general business district when such uses are for the convenience of persons in the I-1 industrial district subject to the uh, regulations applicable to such uses. Now the italicize is my own addition, and from the way that I read this, what it contemplates is industrial areas that are large enough to generate the need for their own services within them, uh, which is a situation that we don't have in this community because our industrial districts are generally fairly small. So the way that I see this is this is probably a, a piece of boilerplate language that was brought over um, and stuck in our ordinance without really due regard for what impact it would have, and I believe it's been in there since the 60s. So it's something that's hung around for a long time. Um, what it seems to do is generate lots of trips to the Zoning Board of Appeals for non-industrial uses who want to go into the industrial area. Um, the, one of the last ones that I can think of was, uh, I forget the business name, but uh, at Fort and Spruce there, the tanning uh, salon, mm -hmm. uh, that had to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals to get a special dispensation uh, for that. Um, as far as I've been able to tell, uh, none of these requests have ever been denied, and um, you know, pretty much any time anybody wants to do anything of a non-industrial nature in these areas, they've got to go through uh, and get the, uh, the uh, variance. Um, I've asked some of the staff with a more historical background than I have if there's ever been an occasion where we thought this was a useful piece of text to have in the ordinance, and the answer was no. Uh, so my thought was, well, let's explore getting rid of it. Um, so I took the, uh, the notion of the Planning Commission. Uh, they supported that action and set up a public hearing, which they had uh, at their July 23rd meeting. Uh, there were no comments uh, from members of the public, and the proposed language, or I should say lack of language, was approved unanimously. Um, just to kind of walk through what this would actually do, uh, this is an entire aerial of the city showing all of the industrial zoning districts. Um, the two industrial parks are shaded in blue, and I checked with the um, EDC director, and we actually have restrictive covenants in place in our industrial parks that, would, that, that only allow manufacturing industrial uses. One of my big concerns in exploring this was the dilution of our industrial uh, properties, specifically our industrial parks, because this proposed change would radically uh, alter how industrial districts had operated in the past. Uh, so these two areas, the airport industrial park and the Easter Day industrial park, are, are protected from any changes. So we'll continue to realize the value that we have in those properties. My two big areas uh, that kind of drove this, specifically were the west end of the island, uh, as well as the East uh, Easter Day industrial area. What I've highlighted here in red are all the non-conforming uses that technically do not conform to the uh, I-1 zoning district requirements. Uh, Sue Motors is auto sales and service. Well, they were until just a couple weeks ago and they moved, but that is not an allowed use in the industrial zoning district. So right now, uh, the clock is ticking. They've got 30 days to get another automotive use in there before that grandfather status expires. Uh, you've also got uh, Weir Furniture right here. Furniture sales is a retail use, not allowed in industrial. And they've had to go to the zoning board to get a couple of variances to do some expansions, which they've done in the past. Uh, Story Automotive, auto repair is not a permitted use in industrial. Uh, this empty uh, site here, as soon as the mouse reappears, that's the tanning salon tanning, I mentioned yeah. earlier. Uh, this area was taken before that building was built. Uh, you've got air gas, who has a retail component that technically is not allowed. And uh, I mentioned this in my uh, report, but Lock City, if you were to strictly interpret the ordinance, could sell you two by fours because that's a building material and that's allowed, but they couldn't sell you a hammer and nails because that's hardware which falls under the retail category. <laughs> So this proposed change not only allow, would allow more flexibility in these districts as far as what could go in here, but would take all these uses in red, which are non-conforming currently, and make them conforming uses. Uh, kind of the same story on the East Easter Day uh, industrial area. You've got UP Tire. 
uh, again, automotive repair. The city's police station technically is a non-conforming use. Um, we'll leave that where it's at, though. Um, I also spoke with um, Ron Meister over at Central Savings Bank about the LH Sheet Metal building, and they've had an awful time trying to get somebody to move in there and use that. Uh, so this ordinance change would allow them a lot more flexibility in terms of who they could get into that building uh, to reuse it. Uh, same goes with the old Fernelia Sunday lot that has just been sitting there since the building was removed. So this would allow more flexibility uh, in terms of how that could be reused. Um, you know, you think of your, today's modern industrial user and they're looking for acreage, you know, a site where they can put um, a larger building on. And a lot of these older industrial areas that we have, the sites simply aren't attractive locations to put new businesses. So um, I've kind of put this together as a bit of a Band-Aid in a sense. Um, I would definitely envision that when we go through our master planning process and our zoning ordinance update, we'll take a more holistic approach to how we want to deal with this. So this is just to kind of help keep things moving. Actually, what kicked this whole thing off was Dave Weir came to me earlier this summer. Uh, he actually owns the gravel lot that's across the street from Sioux Motors. And with them moving, he wanted to be able to put self-storage units there, which is not an allowed use in industrial. So rather than go through the whole zoning board of appeals process, I asked him about what his timeline was. And I thought, well, let's just get rid of this once and for all and remove that roadblock to uh, businesses expanding in these areas. So the proposal um, is to basically remove the uh, text, which you can see stricken through on the, uh, on the screen above. So that's basically my spiel. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Anyone have any questions? Makes sense. Thank you. City Manager, any comments? I uh, just appreciate Mr. Friedman's proactive stance on this. This is the type of change that's facilitative of economic development as well as reinvestment in the community. Thank you for that. Uh, Commissioner Gage. Uh, I so move that the City Commission um, conduct, uh, conduct a first reading. Is that right? Yes. Conduct a first reading of the attached ordinance and schedule a second reading for August 17, 2015, regular City Commission meeting. Support. It's been moved supported. Are there any questions? Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Shimmons? Yes. Mayor Bosmus? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gary Gage? Yes. Sorry. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. <coughs> and we are into the city manager's report. Thank you, Mayor. Item A under the city manager's report would provide for the award of a bid for the purchase of a wing plow for a single axle plow truck. Uh, DPW Director Mora is planning to make a presentation on this matter. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. James? Good evening. Mm -hmm. um, this request is to install a wing plow on the second plow truck, on a second plow truck, uh, um, to make our plowing a bit more efficient. Last February, we had our first wing plow installed on one of our single axle plow, plow trucks. Um, you know, while we didn't, while it was pretty late in the winter, we did give it a, a, a pretty good experiment. We had about six good plowing events that we used it on, um, and we thought it it uh, really worked out well. We used it on the westerly route, um, Lakeshore Subdivision, um, Algonquin, Bermuda, uh, long, uh, wider streets without uh, curbs. Uh, that, that extra width, that extra eight foot width on that, uh, on that plow truck really, uh, really helped things out. Um, our street superintendent, Bill Anderson, he did uh, a pretty detailed analysis on, uh, on the outcome of it after, after the winter time, and he figured out that uh, an average snowfall that took about an eight hour Typically, it took about eight hours to do that route uh, before the wing plow. Now, it took uh, the driver, once he got the hang of it, it, it uh, takes a little bit of practice to get uh, used to putting it down, lifting it up. Um, did a little over five hours. So we're talking, you know, a three-hour savings on that. And those other three hours, he could kick over to other routes and help those other guys out. So um, it really is a, uh, 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 it really came, it met all of our expectations. So, and ultimately, we want to use this next wing plow on the easterly routes, um, Riverside Drive, East Portage Avenue, Shunk Road area. Those, again, longer, straighter roads without curb. Um, and that's, you know, we can use that wing to push, push it off. Um, so ultimately, we want to get rid of a grader. We want to get down to two graders. Currently, we have three. Um, the graders are extremely expensive, very uh, to buy and to operate and to maintain. Um, a new grader right now is about $330,000. And a new plow truck, is about 140. Fully decked out plow truck uh, with the wing is about 140 grand. So for 10% uh, 
additional costs on that plow truck, we're gaining 60% of plowing width. And mm -hmm. on the right routes, the right roads, we're gaining about 35 to 40% more efficiency. So we're going to, on our future trucks, this is the direction we're going mm -hmm. to go in. So anyway, that's my recommendation. I'd like to get that wing tonight. Any questions of Jim? <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Jay Manager. I uh, just appreciate the work on the street department and DPW is its very innovative approach uh, to both increase efficiencies and reduce costs at the same time. Okay. So that'll give us two wing plows uh, and trucks with the ability to do that in the system at this point? That's correct. Mayor. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Bauer. So move the commission approve the purchase and installation of a wing plow on one of the city's plow trucks from truck and trailer specialists of Boyne Falls, Michigan in the amount of $14,269. Support. I move supported. Are there any questions? Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Shimmons? Yes. Mayor Bosma? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Item B, under the city manager's report, we provide for the award of a bid for the purchase of a uh, three quarter ton pickup truck with plow for the street department. As commissioners are aware, the approved 2015 16 fiscal year budget provides an appropriation for the street department to replace one of its three-fourth ton pickup trucks with a plow. While the replacement vehicle would be used in the summer for transportation to and from various work sites, its primary use would occur in the winter for the plowing of alleys, smaller parking lots, and areas that are typically too small or too soft for a loader, grader, or plow truck to effectively service. More, f more specifically, the truck that would be replaced is a 2000 Ford F-250 with 107,000 miles of city implying miles on it. It's in poor condition and would be listed on gov deals for resale. Specific specifications for the replacement unit were written so as to allow GM, Ford, and Dodge to participate in the city's competitive bidding process. The plow was included in the overall truck package requiring the vehicle de dealer to provide an acceptable plow with installation in their submitted bid prices. Four bids for the replacement unit were opened on July 8th. Sue Motors bid amount was submitted as a typo and reclassified to $31,895 and they matched the low bid price su submitted by Signature Ford in the amount of $31,079 through the local bid adjustment policy. Accordingly, it's my recommendation that the commission approve the purchase of a three-quarter ton pickup truck with a plow from Sue Motors <coughs> for the amount of $31,079 as Sue Motors was a low bidder meeting specifications following the application of the local bid adjustment. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Shimmons. I would so move the manager's recommendation. Support. It's been moved to support. Are there any questions? Commissioner Lynn. My two cents. I still don't like getting bids from Signature Ford out of Owasso. They pay no property tax in the Eastern UP. They hire nobody up here. But I've said that before. And that's why we have a local bid preference. <laughs> Anyone else? I'm sure that somebody else, Gage. somebody else might crack this joke, but are you sure we can't talk them into that original, that original number? Yeah. Thirty-one hundred dollars. Thirty-one thousand. Good yeah. luck. Said Commissioner Lenny's yeah. good at haggling. Yeah. Decimal place. Decimal's in the wrong place. Yeah. <laughs> uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Shimmons? Yes. Mayor Boswell? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Item C under the city manager's report would provide for the award of a bid for the I-500 property general improvements. As outlined within the memorandum, specifications were released by UP engineers and architects for general property improvements at the I-500 track to include the removing and or replacement of culverts, site work and associated surface restoration. Bid specifications were publicly advertised in the evening news and on the city's website. And on Tuesday, July 28th, no sealed bids were received. Accordingly, UP engineers and architects solicited proposals from the following local area contractors for the completion of this work. Uh, the low bid was submitted by Nomad Construction in the amount of $71,000. Jeremy Ganyu of UP engineers and architects has reviewed the project work items and is here tonight to answer any specific questions about the project. However, it's my recommendation that the City Commission award the bid for these improvements as outlined to Nomad Construction of Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan in the amount of $71,000. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Gary. 
I was so move awarded the bid for the I-500 property general improvements as outlined herein to Nomad Construction in the amount of $71,000. Support. It's been moved supported. Are there any questions? Just a comment. I see that that's all part of our $250,000 grant that we were fortunate enough to get from the state of Michigan as, a, as an appropriation. And uh, that leaves us about $130,000 roughly for the uh, construction, hopefully, of a, of a new press box eventually. And I'm sure the I-500 committee, uh, I know they've been working uh, diligently, I think, with UP engineers and, and knows the, know amount, know the amount also. But um, this money, uh, the 71000 that's to ensure that the hill stays where it is, as I understand it. And uh, so we won't have that problem going forward and that the... Um, um, and they lost the, at that, when the time the hill moved a couple of years ago uh, with the heavy rains that we had, uh, and then the preceding winter, um, we were fortunate enough to get a $250,000 grant from the state of Michigan, and uh, this, is, this is that money, and then we could use, uh, uh, as I understand it, the rest for a press box and whatever else we may be able to, uh, or the I-500 can raise additional money. I would think it's going to take some additional money, but... Uh, going forward, at least th those discussions can occur. Okay. Uh, roll call, please. Mayor Bosmas? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Shimmons? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Item D under the city manager's report would provide authorization <laughs> of a Michigan Department of Transportation agreement numbered 15 5427 and the award of a construction contract. Uh, for West Easter Day project between I the I-75 Easter Day Interchange and Industrial Park Drive. As outlined within the memorandum, as commissioners are aware, the city was a recipient of a Michigan Department of Transportation Economic Development Funds Category A grant that was awarded as a result of AMI hose selecting the AMI industry site for the production of Teflon-coated braided hose. More specifically, this Economic Development Funds Category A grant was awarded for the milling and resurfacing of West Easter Day Avenue from the I-75 Easter Day Interchange to Industrial Drive to allow for the continued use of West Easter Day Avenue as an all-season truck route. Following the award of the grant, SIDOT Group and the Engineering Department prepared the bidding documents for this project. SIDOT Group has previously been selected to provide engineering services during project construction. According to contract specifications, the planned work is to be substantially completed by September 24th in order to accommodate the international half marathon that will use the, the project area as a component of its route. On July 28th, bids were received for the project, and Payne and Dolan submitted the low apparent bid in the amount of $292,618. Um, accordingly, it's my recommendation that this project be awarded to Payne and Dolan in the amount of $292,618 and that the City Commission authorize the City Manager to execute contract number 15-5427 with MDOT for the West Easter Day Improvement Project. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. And those are two recommendations in discussion with the City Attorney. That is two separate motions. Uh, Commissioner Shimmons. I would move that the City Commission award the construction of the West Easter Day Avenue Mill and Resurface Project to Payne and Dolan Inc. in the amount of $292,618, being the lowest responsible bidder. Support. It's been moved supported. Are there any questions? Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Shimmons? Yes. Mayor Bosmus? Yes. Motion carried. Uh, Commissioner Shimmons? I would further move the City Commission authorize the City Manager to execute contract number 15-5427 with MDOT for the West Easter Day Improvement Project. Support. It's been moved supported. Are there any questions? Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Shimmons? Yes. Mayor Bosman? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? <laughs> yes. Motion <laughs> carried. Thank you. That concludes the city manager's report. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioner. Okay, thank you, city manager. Uh, item number seven, matters presented by the public. Is there anyone in the audience like to make a comment at this time? Okay, here you now we'll close the public comment. City Commission. Uh, Commissioner Bauer. Yeah, um, I actually have a couple of questions with all of the uh, construction that's been going yes. on. It's been hitting kind of close to home with me, literally. <laughs> And so, um, Engineer Basista, if we could, thanks. 
So as I'm new to this, and now I have stakes in my yard. So I mean, does that mean that's how far they're gonna be digging to, you know, to? No, for the, the the stakes uh, in your yard, they're they're typically set back ten feet away from whatever the, that they're staking in order to measure from the stake. Because they seem awful close. <laughs> <laughs> like right up on your front porch, maybe? Yeah, practically. Yeah. yeah. No, the, the initial yeah. stakes are usually for the water and sewer locations. And I haven't seen what is specifically out there, but it's probably an offset of 10 feet uh, to the work. And it would say that on the stake, so I'd be happy to go and look at that for you. I didn't bother reading the stake. They, they were just put up uh, a couple hours ago. Yeah. So I thought I would bring that up. Yeah. No, that's, that's <laughs> offset means it, 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 the work is some distance away from the stake itself. Okay, that was my main question. So thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> Okay. Any other question? What we'd like to do maybe next meeting is have an update on the construction projects. And I've asked the city manager, ask Linda if, if you okay. can do that. Just, happy just to, to bring that. The, yeah, by, by then we're almost, we're not through the summer, but uh, it's getting close. So if we could just have an update next, that when the people listening would, would uh, be interested too, I'd be sure. Sure. Okay. Happy to do that. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Linda, you Does have. Does that mean Commissioner Bauer is getting a new street? Yes, he yes, is. Yeah. Brady is being, time. yes. You don't need a new street. That's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Patchwork quilt. Well, it's not, not really so much the street, it's the sewer that, uh, <laughs> that needed to be replaced, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so, well, the street was in pretty bad condition. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Thank you. Don't blame me. <laughs> Anyone else? Commissioner Gage. Yep. Um, so um, I've been asked to uh, make sure that I tell everyone that um, the chamber is putting on an outdoor movie um, on the Valley Camp um, on August 14th from 8:30 um, until whenever the movie's done. Is it Titanic? It literally is. It is. It's. I'm Seriously? not kidding. Yeah, they're showing Titanic. I was just yeah, no, it's funny. not. No, it's not funny. Well, it is funny. I mean, um, but it's actually it's pretty cheap. It'll be a kind of a fun date night thing. It's ten dollars at the chamber or twelve dollars online. Um, so that's August 14th, watching that's Titanic on the Valley Camp. That's a Friday night? Yep, that's a Friday night. Okay. Titanic on the I'm Ray guessing Mr. Bauer Camp. is not coming. Though. Okay. Why not? Okay. That's a good idea. Okay. $10, so, did you say? $10. Okay, thank you. At the chamber. Anyone else? Commissioner Lynn. Your Honor, I would so move that we adjourn this meeting. Support. support. It's been moved support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. We are adjourned. Thank